everybody, it's Will here again. Hope everybody's doing well, and today I'm really stoked to get to bring you another guitar from the collection of my good buddy Colin Baker that he's graciously allowed me to review as part of the 365 Days of Guitar show. Hope you dig. I want to take a minute at the start of this to just thank all of the new subscribers and supporters to the channel. Things have been growing uh, at a really great rate. I'm really stoked to get to meet all of you and engage and get positive feedback and encouragement. It all means a lot to me. And if you enjoy this sort of content and haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the channel or sharing these videos with your pals. Even a like or a comment on the video is awesome, and uh, whatever you can do to help support the channel is greatly appreciated. Today, we're having a look at a 1991 Gibson SG Les Paul Custom reissue based on the original 61 style SG Les Paul Custom. These guitars were first introduced in that year, 61, and it was the top end model of the, the then Les Paul range. Um, of course, by 63, they were no longer called Les Pauls, but this was the Cadillac of the line. Featured a mahogany body, mahogany neck, a bound ebony fingerboard, binding on the headstock with the split diamond inlay here, as well as a Mother Pearl logo. Uh, you had uh, Cluson tuners. This particular one has just modern Gibson Deluxe versions of those. Uh, the originals had an ABR1 and usually a sideways vibrola tailpiece, although I think sometimes you can see them with the... Uh, the stop tailpiece here, and it had three humbucking pickups, gold hardware, and this beautiful white or ivory finish. These guitars were made in this type configuration for the first few years, and then uh, the specs changed as you got later into the 60s. But this is a pretty true to spec recreation of that first you know, 61, 62 style SG Les Paul Custom. The only real main differences here are that you're going to have modern Gibson pickups. Uh, I believe these are, there's a very likely 57 classics in here, um, although they could be a very late set of the Bill Lawrence pickups that were in use by Gibson a lot during this time as well. And it has a Nashville style bridge as opposed to the ABR1 of the originals. These are quite hefty guitars. This, uh, this SG probably, it certainly weighs more than either of my SGs that I have. And even to be honest, my gold top Les Paul, I think might weigh a little less than this, but it's a really powerful, crunchy sounding guitar. I know it's a favorite of my buddy Colin who owns it and he plays in a, like a stoner doom style band with uh, full stacks. And it's one of his main stage guitars. I uh, usually tunes it pretty low and it uh, works really well for him. Uh, this has a 60s style, a rounded 60s style neck profile, uh, not the flatter, slimmer profile like you see on, say, my red special back there. And this does have a more modern fret size, which is just um, conducive to playing modern styles. A lot of these original ones would have had the fretless wonder frets. These guitars have a very interesting wiring scheme, uh, three pickups and a three-way switch, and then your standard volumes and tones. So when the switch is down, you get the bridge pickup. When the switch is up, you get the neck pickup. And when the switch is in the center, you actually get the middle pickup and the bridge pickup out of phase, which is a pretty cool and interesting sound. It's kind of polarizing. It's not for everybody, but um, I personally am a big fan I love a lot of old blues music and uh, a lot of these old Gibson guitars, you look into like a lot of the two P90 guitars from, you know, the 40s and 50s or maybe like an ES5 where a couple of the pickups would inadvertently be wired out of phase and it would just, it would give a very cool sound, um, particularly if you apply a bit of gain. So this is wired uh, in that traditional style. You do see some of them that have been modified over the years to be a more standard, maybe like one, two, or three pickup selection, but this is wired in the original style. Um, some notable players that have used the SG Custom or SG Les Paul Custom, uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp was using one in the mid-60s. 
and uh, Hendrix used a later version of this. It was um, it would have had the larger Batwing pit guard and witch hat knobs on it. And I think Glenn Buxton from Alice Cooper's original band played again probably a later '60s model. And I think even Zal Clemenson from the Sensational Alex Harvey band he used several SGs, but I think he was pictured at and filmed at points with an SG Custom. They really are the kind of the Cadillac of the SG line and uh, very cool. I'm looking forward to showing some sound samples of this. And again, thank you for listening to the discussion portion. If you dig this content, please consider subscribing or sharing. And I really appreciate all the support. Thanks. Mm -hmm.